The Sports Podcast with the youngest, most daring, intrepid, gutsy, fearless host on the planet. Get ready for Jake's Takes. Here's Jake. My guest today is the assistant coach with the Phoenix Suns. He played for Metro State and won two NCAA championships. In 2002, he was the conference player of the year. In 2011, he joined the Denver Nuggets coaching staff. And in 2016, he became the assistant coach of your Toronto Raptors and was part of their first NBA championship. And in 2020, he became the head coach of the Raptors 905. And just a few weeks ago, he became the assistant coach of the Phoenix Suns. It's my absolute honor to welcome to Jake's Takes, Coach Patrick Matumbo. What's up, Coach? How you doing? Hey, Jake. So, heck of, that's heck of an introduction, man. <laughs> I'm doing well, Jake. Good job, buddy. This is great. This is great. I really enjoyed it. Heck of an introduction. Thank you. And by the way, I just got to thank you because, holy cow, thank you so much for coming on to my podcast, especially when the days are very hectic now because you just signed with Phoenix. So special thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. I'm, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to spend this time with you. Did you find a place in Phoenix? Yes, I think I think we did, man. And you know, Jake, in our house, my wife kind of takes care of that part. You know, I'm, I focus more on, on on the basketball side and and uh, the contracts and all that. Once that's done, and my wife takes over, I think I think she found us a pretty cool place. We're excited about. Well, that sounds like fun. Okay, so before we talk about your new job, I have to start with your time in Toronto. I might be wrong, but I think you have a long relationship with Masai Ujiri. He was the GM of the Nuggets when you were there, and then and then the, and then you joined the Raptors when he while Ujiri was still running the show. He still is. But tell me about your relationship with Masai and what you've learned from him. Well, I uh, I know Masai yes from from a long time ago at at, at the Nuggets there when George Carr hired me. Masai was the general manager, and then. You know, we stayed in contact and, and uh, we worked together for a few years there as he was a general manager. And then when I joined, when Dwayne Casey brought me on board with the Raptors, Masai also happened to be the general manager. So our relationship, we were both from Africa and Masai has done such a great job with, with Africa. It represents the continent very well. He's an example and a role model for all of us. Uh, we'll try to emulate whatever you know what what he did. So uh, he's very gracious with his time, and 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 anytime we need help with anything, he's always available to help us. So great guy, great guy to know. Seriously, speaking about Africa, though, what he's done is crazy. Brought Pascal to Toronto, and now Christian Coloco. What do you know about Coloco? Is he? I don't know much about Chris Coloco. I just know he's from Cameroon, I believe, right? Big size. And one thing I know about Masai and and and, and his crew is that you know they've done their homework. They've they've done very very seldom that they would miss on a player. So I'm pretty excited to see what what this kid turns out to be. Same here. I hope he becomes a stud. <laughs> He will. He probably will. So, obviously, 2019 was just a special time for the Raptors. Something I, personally, will never forget. But tell me about that experience, what it was like for you as an assistant coach, winning the NBA title. Wow, Jake, I'm telling you, it's, it was unbelievable. Uh, because the two years prior, I think we got, we got swept. We got swept twice by Cleveland. Right, so it was, it was very hard. It was very hard moments even within the organization. We're just trying to figure out a way to get to the next step. Um, Masai, the front office, made the move, brought in Kawhi, uh, and you know the head, the the rest of Coach Nurse, and the rest is, is is history. Right, we were able to get over the hump, and uh, just being able to be part of of that staff, part of that team that was able to bring. A, a a a championship to the to the city to the country was very very special. Tell me honestly, right now, coach, if Kawhi stayed, 
Would the Raptors run it back? Because that team had crazy good chemistry. Everybody knew their role. You had the lead scorer, amazing defense. Like, would they have run it back? Well, Jake, I'll tell you this, man. In, in, in basketball, you never know, right? Winning a championship, winning a championship is an incredibly difficult task. Uh, sometimes we take it for granted. But, you know, think about if, Ka if uh, Kawhi doesn't make that shot against Philly, we're not even talking about championships, right? So it takes, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. But I, I like our chances. Yeah. Okay, so we got to switch over to the 905 here. And in 2020, you were named the head coach for the 905. And you had tremendous success. You led your team to first place two seasons in a row. Plus, your team had the league's top-ranked offense in 2021 and top-ranked defense in 2022. Tell me about your experience coaching 905 compared to your other coaching experiences. Jake, who does the research for you, man? I I've talk, listen, I've talked to journalists. I've talked to people who, who did not dig out this information. And, I mean, you are, boom, right on top of it, man. I'm just like Messiah. I do my homework. Yeah, you do. You do, man. You do. I am impressed. <laughs> I am impressed. I am pleasantly surprised. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. No, the experience of, of being a head coach, Jake, was 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 great. It was great. I really enjoyed myself. I really, you know, I always look at it as a, as an honor and a privilege to be able to lead anybody, right? So, and then to be be to be in that chair and 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 help these young men who all have dreams and aspirations and and serve the organization in this capacity was something that I will cherish forever. It gave me tons of experience. I learned about myself. I learned about leadership. I learned about the game. I learned about people. It was it was all around an unbelievable experience that I'm forever grateful for. And by the way, I'm just wondering, like, when the Raptors want to like call someone up, do they call you and ask you for your input, or do they just call them up and you send them up? Well, it depends, right? There's some players. There's some players that they're they're like the Delanos and. Uh, Justin Champagne and those guys, they'll send them to us and then they'll practice. And we, we sort of, we have a schedule, right? We know that on this game, they will play with 905. And after that, they will get called back up and play with the big team. So we already have established that. Coach Nurse and Bobby Webster, our general manager, would have, have discussed it and kind of just informed us of what's happening. Every so often, they may ask me about a player on our team, but most most of the time, we already know who's going up, when, and that kind of things. So I was at a 905 game this year, and I took out two things. One was that Delano Benton dominated 30 points. And the other thing was that Alex Antetokounmpo didn't really play. Like, how's his development been, and what type of player do you think he'll be? Very good. I think I think he's young, you know, it's, and, and the game is different uh, from where he came from uh, last year. The game is much faster, uh, better athletes and that kind of stuff. You look at Kevon Harris. His first year with us, he didn't play at all, right? Uh, he played a little bit here and there, but not really. And then his second year, he became a player who averaged, what, 25, 28 minutes, somewhere there, shot about 38% from three. And now he's getting an opportunity and a serious look with a, a numerous NBA teams. You know, so that's just part of the, the, the development. He didn't, and that's something that we take pride in. And Alex, this is just year one, was the first year of his development. And I believe it because he works hard. He works hard. He's a great, great person. And he's so much fun to our group. So he keeps working. Keeps working, keeps the right mindset, doesn't get discouraged. Who knows that this year or next year he takes the next step? Maybe one day he'll be like Giannis cracking a dad joke after every game. Ah, who knows? <laughs> well, after you win an MVP, or after you win two MVPs, you can crack any type of jokes you want. That's my dad's favorite thing. He doesn't even, my father, he'll watch the game for the dad joke afterwards. No way, no way. <laughs> Do you like those dad jokes? Yeah, they're pretty funny. Like I think what, they're pretty funny, too. My favorite one is, what do you call a fake noodle in impasta? <laughs> <laughs> so good. That's so good, yes. <laughs> okay, so let's move on now because I am really disappointed. I'm not going to lie, but I'm disappointed 
not disappointed. I'm sad. That's the wrong word, disappointed. To see you leave Toronto. Oh. But I'm obviously very happy for you. And you. you have this amazing opportunity. You're joining the Phoenix Suns, one of the best teams in the NBA. How excited are you for this opportunity to be in the spotlight? Everybody could see how amazing of a coach you are now. The oh. world will be the world will be opened up. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. I'm very I'm very excited, Jake. You know, and and the way I look at coaching, Jake, is always uh, any opportunity. I guess really is 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 really to go and serve. It's really to go and and help people. And that's just a platform that has now been given to me to go and do what I did here for six years. And hopefully I can go and do the same thing there. So I'm excited. My family is excited. Sad to leave Toronto uh, but because Toronto has been so good to me. You know, Jake, uh, in Toronto, so many things, so many good things happened for us. My kids started to go to school uh, in Toronto. Uh, I had a fourth son born to us in Toronto. I won my first NBA championship in Toronto. I became a head coach for the first time in Toronto. So sp Toronto is a special, special, special place for me. What do you think? You think you can maybe rub off on the Toronto Maple Leafs organization? No. <laughs> maybe. Well, like uh, you, know, you know, I think they're a great organization and they'll figure it out. Yeah. I was sitting with my friends the other day, and I had a Maple Leaf um, speaker next to me. And my friend goes, how'd you get that? Were you boxing and got knocked out in the first round? So they gave it to you as a prize. Oh, my goodness. Wow, your friend, your friend is funny. <laughs> By the way, how did this coaching opportunity come around now to go to Phoenix? Like, did Monty Williams, like, call you and stuff? Or how'd yeah. you get it? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. He, uh, they asked, they asked uh, uh, the way it works in our business here because I was on the contract with the Raptors. The Phoenix Suns would ask permission to the Raptors. It would be Masayo Bobby and Bobby will grant Masayo Bobby would grant permission for them to speak to me, which they did. And then I spoke with Monty and, and Monty and I uh, hit it off. And then that's, that's how the opportunity came about. You know, if I'm, I'm just saying that if I was an NBA GM, I would make you a head coach immediately. Come on, Blake. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Your players literally love you. You got the oh my goodness, Jake, you're my favorite. You're my favorite guy from now. You're my favorite Torontonian from now on. Forget everybody else. You are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, enjoy Phoenix. But if I was a betting man, you're gonna be a head coach sooner than later. Hey, let's save this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, you know, in my culture, they say from your mouth to God's ears. So thank you. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate that. Of course. I'm just, I'm just speaking the truth. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Okay, so this Suns team is actually stacked with D-Book and CP3 leading the way. What a, what a backcourt that is. But I'm a big DeAndre Ayton fan. And I know there's a lot of noise right now around his future in Phoenix. But what do you think DeAndre Ayton brings to the table for the Suns? You know, and when it comes to that, Jake, I think I think right now would be appropriate for me to kind of just, you know, watch it, uh, you know, from afar and let trust the uh, the general manager James Jones, uh, coach Coach Williams. I think they have a better grasp of the whole situation and what the team needs at this time. But I, I know he's a he's a very good player, very good young man, works hard and very very talented. And I'm sure, and I'm sure that over time, over time, both parties will figure out something that works for them. What's actually crazy is that now you just came from Toronto to go to Phoenix, and now the rumors are that DeAndre Ayton might end up in Toronto. How man, what are the odds, man? What are, how about that, man? It's like a fair trade. What's going on? <laughs> We got oh, it. I hope so. I okay. hope so. <laughs> By the way, I wanted to ask you, is Chris Paul the best point guard of all time? I know he hasn't won a title yet and all this stuff, but his career assist to turnover ratio is four to one. Nobody else ever has hit four to one. Not even Stockton or Kidd. And he shoots as good as Steve Nash. How do you deny that, coach? 
It's pretty. It's pretty good, right? It's pretty good. Now that's a that's a very very you know you br you bring up some very very good points. Now there's been so many point guards uh, in the history of our league, right? But he's certainly up there. He's certainly up there amongst the best. When okay, so awesome. last question, Coach. Tell me. Growing up, which player were you a fan of? And by the way, did you think you would end up to be a coach or a even when you were a player or not? Nah? I did not. I did not, I did not, Jake. I, I didn't think I was going to be a coach. I thought after I was done playing, probably go back to school and become a lawyer or a diplomat. Uh, that was that was the initial plan. Uh, but then I got into basketball. I got into coaching because I really wanted to help young people. And then and then I kind of just fell in love with, with teaching the game and teaching about life and, and trying to help them and give direction, give them direction the best way I could. Uh, and then to answer your first question about, um, what's your first question about? Which player um, were you a fan of? Player? Yeah, yeah. So it's funny because growing up, I really liked, you would never guess, Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem the Dream! Hakeem the Dream. That was my guy. And then Scottie Pippen. Oh, Pippen. Scotty Pippen was my other one. You like the defense, baby. Hey, come on now. Get and right then, with the you would never guess this one. You would never guess this third one. Allen Houston. Oh. Allen Houston, the shooter. Yes. So those are the three main players I really, really enjoyed watching growing up. Oh, wow. Okay, Coach, this has been such an awesome experience having you to talk some hoops on my podcast. Did you enjoy our time together? Oh, Jace, this was phenomenal, man. Thank you so much. I'm glad we got we got to do this. And, man, you do a great job, man. Hey, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> when I grow up, my, my new goal is to be just like Jake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you so much.